Hello. There are six key elements to building a business that runs itself when you're not there all the time. And that's really important because it also means that those six elements are key if you ever wanted to sell your business to you know, someone else. Because unless the business runs when you're not there, you can't really sell the business without you being part of it. Now, the six key elements are operations, which is where we're all good. You know, everyone starts in business doing something they're good at. Goals and strategy, which is where people tend to, a lot of self-employed and small business owners tend to be less good. That's the classic working on your business. That's working in your business. It's unless people find time to actually work on their business, they don't tend to do this as well as they could or should. Understanding your finance and numbers. I've done some posts on that recently. So uh, it makes a huge difference if you just make a few small improvements to a few key variables. It can double your bottom line. Three or four lots of 10% add up to doubling your bottom line. Strategic sales and marketing I'm going to come back to. Uh, building teams. Now, that can be either working with people you employ or outsourcing, but the people elements, so people and teams, the people element also deals with, uh, you know, how to deal with customers, etc. as well. So the whole area of dealing with people and then having systems in place, because if you don't have systems in place, then basically you haven't got a business that will run itself when you're not there, because what a system does is it's a process whereby someone else can actually follow the process and do a particular task or function, you know, without you having to do it for them. So you need things to be systemized, mapped out. Now, going back to sales and marketing, a lot of people don't really understand the difference between what's known as tactical and what's known as strategic. So strategic is really the sort of the underlying message or marketing message um, and the underlying sort of processes that you've put in place to deliver that message and to convert customers or prospects. Whereas tactical is where you put individual adverts out or individual broadcasts or an individual presentation. Uh, you know, a lot of people tend to do things sort of ad hoc, which is tactical. I think there's a, a few key things to understand with marketing and sales strategy. The first one is up here, what I've drawn out is a simple supply and demand curve. So if you put the price for a good or service up there and the amount that can be sold along here, the supply line basically says the higher the price, the more you'll get sold because more sellers will come in to sell this thing. So there tends to be a relationship going upwards like that for that supply curve. The demand thing is the opposite. So what tends to happen here is if for any given product or service in any given market, the higher the price, the less people will be able and willing to buy. And as the price is reduced, you sell more. Now, I've drawn two demand lines here. The first one, the lowest one there, that is if you are a, a standard service or product in a particular market. So you are what's called a commodity because you're the same as everybody else. And what that means is that your demand line, it's difficult to map these things out without doing market research and you know questionnaires, etc. But effectively, your demand line is very price sensitive. And that's why it looks flat like that. So what happens is because there's lots of competitors out there very similar to you, if you try and raise your prices, you'll lose a comparatively large amount of custom. So therefore, you're sort of stuck really at a low price because all of your competitors out there, you've all driven the price down. You can't really reduce your price to capture market share, which you think in theory would make sense because everyone's driven the price down so that margins are very low. And it's the typical commodity you're all charging the same thing because no one stands out from the rest and everyone's competing with each other so you have competitors so what you really need to do is get to a stage where on this blue line here what you've now done is you've set yourself apart you've made yourself a specialist or an expert in a particular niche or you know section of the market and what you've done is you've positioned yourself so you've got few fewer if any competitors so you're not competing anymore and you're able to charge a higher price and sell more because you're seen as an expert or a specialist. And the other thing is you'll be less price sensitive. So not only can you charge this higher price, but you could even put your prices up and you'll find that, say, you put your prices up 10 percent. You might only lose like three or four percent of your customer. You might not lose any, but you might lose three or four percent of your customers or clients rather than 15, 20 percent. Which means, which means you can actually put your prices up and make more profit and have more capacity to go after your better prospects. So that's why it's really important to niche. 
Now, the other thing is that what a lot of people don't understand is that demand line, that where they cross the demand and supply line, that is the market price. And that means that if you wanted to sell these many things, that's the price you'd charge. But you could charge a higher price and sell fewer. And you could charge a higher price still and sell even fewer. So what that means is there are people that you're selling to at this price who would, given the opportunity to do so, they would have bought from you at a higher price. It's just that there's fewer of them than you're currently selling to. So therefore, if you can segment your customers or clients, so A, B, C, D, you know, your best, your less, less good, then what you could do is you could actually have more than one offering. And if you have more than one offering, then you can actually segment your customer base and sell different things at different prices. And there's a variety of ways of actually doing that. And they all make sense once you understand that argument. So, for instance, you can have a cross sell or an upsell. So a cross sell is where you sell related products to some of your customers, but maybe not to all of them. An upsell is where you should sell larger amounts or longer term contracts, etc. Uh, you could bundle in extra value. So you could have, so if you ran a restaurant, for instance, you could provide a free dessert worth five pounds, say. Uh, so rather than increasing, sorry, rather than discounting your prices to give extra value, you could add in this extra dessert worth five pounds. So people will think, well, that's worth an extra five pounds, but it might only cost you an extra 50p to a pound to provide it. And that'll be much better than discounting your prices. So bundling it in extra value, cross-selling, upselling. And the other one you can do, particularly for service type businesses, in, um, you know, providers, is you could segment your clients and, and offer uh, gold, silver, bronze or platinum, gold, silver. So you could have um, a private uh, private product or service, um, professional, uh, you know, um, retail. You can basically differentiate yourself and have different product offerings or categories. And that's called packaging. And all of those things, what they do is they enable you to increase your average price without necessarily putting up your headline price. So specializing or becoming an expert in a niche means you'll charge more anyway. And these other strategies mean you can charge even more than that on average. Now, the other thing I've put here is once you understand that, it's also worth understanding that at any given time, in any given market, generally, there are exceptions to this, but generally, particularly for service type businesses, you've got something like um, 3%, 1 to 3% who are called now buyers, and the other 97%, 97 to 99% actually, they are either future buyers, 67% of them, or they'll never buy, 30%, but you don't know who they are. So what you really need to do is to engage with people right at the start here and have a system in place where you connect with them regularly. And so what you do is you need what's called a lead magnet here, a low risk way to get them to engage with you. And then you need to supply them with constant pieces of information to help them make their decision as they go on what's called the buyer's journey and they decide for themselves eventually whether to buy or not and then who to buy from. And if you're the one nurturing them, you're the one they'll buy from. So that's why you need what's called a drip campaign. And you also need, when they come out this end as now buyers, you need a system in place to help you convert them into customers or clients of yours rather than someone else's. So you need a sales funnel here. So really what, what we all need to understand is how the supply and demand element works here so we can position ourselves in a niche we can specialize um, and become seen as an expert we can use the strategies I talked of there to sell different things to different customers at different prices and we can use these uh, principles here to make sure that we <clears throat> communicate with people on a regular basis to turn them into suspects over here prospects now buyers customers or clients so the whole thing is, um, you know, it's really worth understanding the whole principle of strategic marketing and how it fits into the six key elements of building any business that runs itself. Now, all of these things are great ideas and they're the sort of ideas that most people would think, yeah, that's a good idea, but not actually implement. And the best way to ensure that you implement a good idea is to say you're going to do it, but to tell someone that you know, like, trust, respect, that you're going to do it and ask them to check up with you whether you've done it or not, i.e. hold you accountable. 
And the best way to do that is to become what's known, become part of what's known as either an advisory group or a mastermind group. Uh, Napoleon Hill, in his uh, Think and Grow Rich book, which is a classic, talks about the uh, principle of a mastermind as being one of the 13 key steps to riches. And he actually puts that as one of the most important of them. Now, if you wanted to find out more about how a mastermind group works and how that could help you, have a look at businessroundtableuk.co.uk. Uh, so there we have it. Six key elements to build in your business. What this means, by the way, is if they're all fully developed, you've got a nice big round business wheel. And if you've got bits that are lacking, you'll have a bumpy ride and it'll be a bumpy ride until you fill out the bits that are lacking. And then you have a nice big round wheel. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for uh, watching.